너 배구를 많이 봤냐? 어? 너 이탈리아에서 왔다고 이탈리아 마피아들 그거 흉내는 거야? 나 봐줬어. 나 좋아. 어때야? 야, it's not smiling. 난2 플러스 원이야. 나도 언제 나무 써먹어봐야지. 
He trains hard for more than six to seven years, and along with his beloved friend Tong Young Bae, aka Taeyang. YG films a documentary called Real Docu Big Bang, where three other members join in. Now, initially, these two feel it's unfair to debut as five when they trained much longer and wanted to focus solely on hip hop as a group named JDYB. But the dude's like, nah, you debut as a five member group. And then bang, Big Bang debuts. The legend begins. I don't even need to explain Big Bang's legacy. Anyways, this video is a piece on GD, not Big Bang. But since he is the leader of Big Bang, let's go through some of his notable work. In 2007, Big Bang debuts with their first EP, Always. Big Bang gains instant popularity as their title song, Lies, becomes one of the biggest hits in K-pop history. Six weeks straight on the top of the Melon Chart, 2014 and Countdown nominated, best song of the decade. On the same year, Big Bang releases their second EP, Hot Issue, with the title song, Last Farewell, that causes a syndrome on par with Lies. After that, Big Bang releases EP3, Stand Up, and its title song, Haruaru, becomes a mega hit too. And guess who the songwriter and producer of all three songs were? <laughs> so, Big Bang gains reputation as the producer idol on top of his already existing title as Best Idol Rapper. He even earns his spot as a musician, which was rare back then with the public's view towards K-pop idol groups. For your info, idols are still not considered true musicians to this day with the stigma that they are manufactured, trained, dancing and singing machines, fostered by the labels, but some get to kill that negative stigma by breaking through with their song making skills and etc. According to that, G-Dragon becomes the idol that has the most anticipating future in 10 years number one and becomes one of the best songwriters of the year along with seven other producers including some big names like JYP, Sateji, and Brave Brothers. While there was some controversy in the middle about whether G-Dragon actually produces his music or not, YG Entertainment's Yang Young Seok directly stated, Kwon Ji Young produces all of his melodies and lyrics 100% himself. To so some people that might still not be convinced, I'll quote one credible dude on G-Dragon who spoke up about this issue. Do not question G-Dragon, Kwon Ji Young is a tremendously talented songwriter and producer that even I am jealous of as a professional producer in the industry. The instant I heard Big Bang's Lies and Haru Haru album, the shock I got was so big that I felt like Salieri watching Mozart. G-Dragon is the best songwriter of our era who possesses the talent to lead the K-pop industry. We need to let him do everything he can to produce music without any disturbance. Oh. Leaving behind all those controversies, afterwards, G-Dragon makes hits after hits, and it's even hard to count and list all of them. He dives into his solo career as well. He releases his first solo album, Heartbreaker, sweeping number ones on all the charts and shows. He also wins Album of the Year on Mama 2009. In addition, he also does unit activities with his fellow rap member from Big Bang, T.O.P. Their songs like Hi Hi, Oh Yeah, Boggy Gayo, Chibe Gajima become hits everywhere. Personally, these were the songs that every college student was singing in 2011. While G-Dragon was the king of K-pop, another big reason he became so well known to the general public was probably his appearance on Infinite Challenge, Korea's then number one TV show. He came on the show and made his hits like Param Nasa that went viral throughout the whole nation. <laughs> After he gained the general public and industry's respect, GD goes into a more artist artsy phase, aka He puts out albums like One of a Kind, which got the Best Rap Hip Hop Song Award, and also that which was restricted to 19 and above, but regardless top the charts, which was unprecedented in his market. And look who was in the MV as well. The album went on Billboard, sold 250,000, and was the most sold solo album at the time. He got the Mama Best Male Artist and Soul Pop Music Awards Best Album. He got 17 hit songs in 2012 alone. Woo, it was GD's year. Why From then, he made yeah, more albums like Pura Ta, which has my favorite song of his, Fruit. This song made people wild in the buzz, by the way. Anyways, he toured the whole world. He made crazy iconic stages on Mama, like Good Boy. Challenge multiple times, pumping out crazy addictive songs again and again. 
Okay, from now on, no more awards and achievements. Let's just say he got it all, even after that. Okay. He got everything he could in the K-pop industry. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. He got the respect from the people, and also K-hip-hop rappers respected him, too. <laughs> so, after all of that, GD now ventures into the fashion business. I mean, he was a fashion icon while he was the king of K-pop anyways. He basically made the street look popular, along with so many fashion styles and hairstyles trending in Korea. He had the nickname Wampan Nam, which means sold out man, because every piece he wore sold out instantly. Also, he was the first Asian muse of Givenchy, and the only Asian being invited to the France Paris Chanel. Look at this dope picture with Virgil Abloh and Carl Lauderfield. He literally owns the fashionista title in Korea and is called a celebrity among celebrities. He doesn't stop here just as a model or a mere muse. He makes his own freaking fashion line or brand. You've probably seen these shoes on every single brand celebrity or influencer out there. No, they're just not any Nike yeah, shoes. No, like, so it's a collaboration yeah. product between Nike it's and GD's it's brand, Peace Minus One. Peace Minus One can be seen as G Dragon's other name. He said this at a press conference yeah, and posted an yeah. art exhibition yeah. collab with Even international the artists. Back to Nike, yeah, the pair noises were huge because first, Nike allowed a collab on one of their most popular models, Air Force Ones, and also they never allowed to alter the logo for an artist, but for G Dragon, they let him put it in Korean. Just look at who Nike collaborates with for shoes. I don't know many, but maybe Michael Jordan, Travis Scott. Now these pair noises one and two and the recent Kwondo are still selling at insane prices on the resale market. You can definitely feel his artistic sense of design and his name value at the same time with the shoes. Now that being said, here's my opinion. I would like to say that G-Dragon is an icon, a legend of K-pop, and also pop culture in regards to the impact he had on fashion and style in Korea. In short, this guy is just a genius. Of course, there was painstaking work starting from such a young age, but GD always managed to do things differently, in his own unique style and way. On a side note, some people even make fun of his rap style and way of talking, saying that you can't understand what he's saying. <laughs> But that all became absorbed and recognized as the GD style now. Recently, Angmu's Lee chan is being made fun of for having the GD disease, but that's another story. Moreover, GD's style of dancing, which to an extent somewhat looks effortless or super de-stressed, has also become his signature as usual the other idols dance razor sharp and in perfectly synchronized same ways. Like this, G-Dragon is spotlighted and distinguished from all the talented artists out there, not only because he is simply the leader of one of the most successful and popular groups of K-pop, Big Bang, but because he is a creator, a true artist, a one of a kind that doesn't conform to the status quo, that basically throws a coup on everything. <laughs> He's the god. He's G Dragon. He's the god. The greatest of all time. He did it all through time. Like you can see when he was born there. Like thanks to his mother. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thanks to his mother. He did a great job. Like shout out to you. He was all for entertainment, from rapping, fashion, uh, acting, and all that. Like everything. So now you know where the flower shoes there. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've been wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Going yeah. Going we thought it's a thing just yeah. out yeah, here. You know, people make brands, mm -hmm. not like, mm -hmm. so it's this big. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. And you know, I think that the flower has a certain meaning in Asia. As a Asian. symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. China specifically. Yeah. I've heard one of the Chinese. I think it was the gym, I think, is talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. That flower, the yeah. yellow and the... Sunflowers. No, it's the yellow and the middle and white, white flowers. I think it has a meaning or something. Yeah, so that's why he didn't choose any flower. Oh, unless he has his own meaning with it. Yeah. But that, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. a good news that he was choosing the only Asian. 
once a year to attend the That's a great honor. I took a picture with the. I don't know, but it sounds heavy. Yeah, apart from Virgil, the the second one, I think it was that was Dior, Christian Dior, if I'm not mistaken. Like, who like? I got invited. Yeah, the second old man, like oh, the second person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I think it was Christian Dior. Wow. Wow. That's wow. That looks That's like amazing. Legends, two legends. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoy it yeah. and rest in peace to both of them, um, Virgil and. Yeah. 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 When is this video? Yeah. <laughs> Stay safe, guys. Yeah. Are you done? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just yeah. see yeah. the next video. Peace. <laughs>